tested. Hi, I'm Will Smith, thetested.com. And I'm Norm. Uh, we're here today to talk to you about servers in your home. Do you have a server in your home, Norm? I do have a server in my house. What do you use your server in your home for? I use to store every single DVD rip I have, hmm. every single TV rip, and all my CDs. And like backup, perhaps? Yeah. Maybe backup, yeah. Okay, so file sharing. So, so basically, you have a machine in your home. It stays on all mm -hmm. the time. Yep. On it, you can run, uh, you can stream video, you can stream music, you can watch photos, you can uh, do all sorts of media-related stuff. Stream to a PC or even to a console. Or, to or like Xbox, a little, even PS3, iPad, iPhone, whatever mobile device. Okay, so it's, it's an all-purpose repository for all of the stuff that's important. Yes. And, and so, why did you do this? Um, because server, I can expand on it, it's cheap. Okay. Uh, low power. Okay. And it's a computer that can have always on. So you don't want to use like your gaming PC because your gaming PC yeah. is going to draw a couple hundred watts yeah. at idle. My desktop, 1,000 watt power supply. Yeah, that's don't a, want that's that on. Too much I juice. want a small server computer that I can have always on for you know FTP serving. I can have you know remote networking, turn on access to my main computer. I, that sounds great to me. Yes. So let's talk about uh, building a home server. Uh, we have all the stuff we need to do it right here, but first we're going to talk about the software we're going to use as the core of the machine. So basically, what is Windows Home Server? It's a modified version of Windows Server 2003 from Microsoft, and it's very efficient server software. So it's very stable. Yes. I mean, Windows Server 2003 is based on XP, mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a, but it's, I think it's a Vista kernel, but it's a good Vista kernel, yes. not a bad Vista kernel. But it's special. It's made for servers. Right, so they do a bunch of different things that are, that are mm -hmm. different from even standard Windows, home, Windows Server, rather. Okay. Um, so one of the things that you do when you install a Windows Home Server on a machine is it automatically partitions uh, whatever drive you install into a C drive, which is where the OS and applications and those types of things are, mm -hmm. and a D drive. And a D drive is actually every single other hard drive. It's all the shares. Everything, all the shares. Right. So whether you have one hard drive or six hard drives, right. you're only going to have a C drive and a D drive. The C drive being where the OS software is, and that's why you, you want to have the fastest drive right. on the C drive, the fastest hardware. And the D drive could be, but, you know, but the D drive is just mount points it, for every yep. other drive in the system, and they do a, a kind, kind of some tricky stuff with shadow copies so that you can uh, have file duplication across all the drives. And I mean, it, it's a bunch of neat tricks. Basically, all you need to know is that once you plug uh, your these hard drives into your machine, then they all show up as part of this big kind of storage cloud. What are the gotchas? Uh, well, you want to use the a relatively big fast drive for C, and then your D drives can be slow. Like you can even use yep. USB drives if you want to use. Yeah, them. really. Um, the, th the reason you do that is because any of the data that comes onto the home server uh, first comes onto that C drive and then gets partitioned out and doled out to all the other drives. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that that C drive be fast and be big because when it fills up, the home server gets really slow. And it's really a bare bones Windows OS, but it does have some server functionality. So what it does is it can back up up to 10 machines on your home network. They must be wired and they must be Windows They don't machines. have to be wired. Oh, they can be wired or wireless. Right. It's better if they're wired. Faster if they're wired. Yep, more but stable. Really, basically, all you need to do is make sure the first backup is done wired and then all yes. the rest of them are incremental so it's a lot smaller and doesn't take much time. And uh, it has a built-in file server, so you have network shares, yes. you have public folders and user accounts. You can. You know, Special folders for types of content yep. with music and video and photos. And you can also manage redundancy for those folders. So if you have a folder just, just for video, you can exactly in, um, in your drives have that backed up. So that you have twice the amount of space, but it will be a real backup. But if a hard drive fails, then you then that data is not lost. Now it's important. Redundancy is not the same as backup. Right. With redundancy, you're covered in case of drive failure. But should you accidentally delete a bunch of files or a virus comes through and wipes out your photo directory, uh, redundancy doesn't really help you there because those changes propagate immediately across the drive. So don't think that flipping that redundant switch in a home server means that you don't have to back up this data too. It's really important to keep backing up that data. And also there's a dynamic DNS, so you can access the home server. Oh, cool. Uh, if you buy Windows Home Server a license, you get, a, uh, domain, you get access to domain homeserver.com. So for instance, I can have you know, norman at .homeserver.com and access so, all my files off -site. So even if you're on, say, Comcast and you get dynamic IP mm -hmm. addresses, it will automatically update and you can, you can access your files on the home server and the other files inside, the other computers inside your network from anywhere, pretty much. And then those files that are, are actually on the server, we can access them with a UNP NP server. Okay, um, so you can stream to Xboxes and yes. limited streaming to PS3s and some other platforms. So Windows Media Player software, basically. But Windows it doesn't Media work Center, that well. But the code export isn't that great, right. and that's why the best part of a Windows Home Server is that because it's just Windows, you can install applications and plugins. So you can um, remote desktop into you can this. Remote desktop, and, you can yeah. have services that actually uh, are better server software. So, so you're not limited to just what they ship. Yep. Like you might be with a NAS box or something like that. You can actually use you know whatever you want. Let's talk about the hardware first here a little bit. We tested a couple of 
different configurations. Yes. Uh, we wanted to have something sub six hundred dollars because we were looking at the price of competitor home server. Yeah. So you devices. could buy a home server that runs Windows Home Server, you know, a physical unit without having to build one. The HP sells one for about six hundred fifty bucks. It's actually that's really nice, really nice hardware, one. Yeah. Uh, very high end. The cheaper ones are based on the Atom processors. Intel Atom processors about you know two hundred bucks. And probably want to avoid the Atom ones in my experience because yeah. you can't do a whole lot of media streaming. So the that. reason we wanted to build one is because we could one pick the best hardware, the fast hardware. It's gonna right. be a little cheaper actually, and it's way more expandable. Like for example, the HP one only four hard drives. We could put six we in this machine. Yeah. yeah. So. So, um, plus USB drives, so we can put six SATA drives in here, which is going to be even better performance. So we tested two configurations, an Athlon 2 and a Core i3. Uh, both were about the same price, around $550, which is $100 cheaper than the dual core HP Media Smart Server. Yep. What do we find, Norm? And the Core i3 was actually much better. We'll have a full story um, linked to this article. Scroll down. Um, scroll down, and we'll show you exactly how the, uh, the benchmarks turned out, um, power and you know, performance. but. The upshot well, is sort of the for, Intel is what we for want. speed and and power usage. The dual core Intel with hyper threading was much better than the quad core mm -hmm. AMD machine. So uh, let's get started building. First thing we're going to do while the motherboard's out of the case, I'm actually going to pop the CPU cover off, put the CPU in place. And this is an uh, an H55 chipset motherboard, and the reason we use that it's 1156 uh, socket, but it also has integrated video. So with the home server, you're never actually going to be plugging. Um, a, I mean, you know, most of the time you're going to remote desktop into it. So you yep. won't even have a monitor, or keyboard, or mouse plugged. But into we the did machine. need the video out, and it has DVI, VGA, HDMI. Uh, we need that for installation. For the installation, exactly. Okay, so the CPU is in. The next okay. thing to do is drop memory in. I guess you should you could hand me these, but. So we chose four gigabytes of crucial RAM, about 112 bucks for four gigs. It's kind of overkill. It is think? overkill. Um, the most home servers you buy right now are two gigs. Four gigs is going to be useful if you're going to run apps. If you're going to have a lot of services um, running on the server, if you have a lot of plugins, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be really useful and you know optimal if, performance. If you want to run a real web server or anything mm -hmm. like that, then it's good to have more memory. Yep. And and uh, it's important to note if you want to have more questions about how we're actually doing this, you should refer back to our how to build a PC video from a few months ago. Uh, we'll put a link to that in the post as well, so, where we get into a lot more detail about how each of the components goes into the machine and how to do it the right way and the safe way. So the next thing we're going to do is bring the case up onto the system, on the table, and we're going to put the motherboard in the case, and then we'll put the cooler and the drives in the machine and the power supply, and we'll be ready to go. For the case, we picked a uh, Cooler Master Elite 310. It's an a full AT or mid tower case, but it fits ATX cases. Our motherboard is um, mini ATX, not a full motherboard. Uh, the reason we did uh, this mid tower case and not a small like shuttle style case is because we wanted enough. Uh, uh, up, uh, enough internal drive base, so we can have for this case six, uh, six yeah, up to six, it. up to six hard drives. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, because the home server lets you add as many as many uh, hard drives as you want. I mean, you can have a ten terabyte home server machine really easily if you put five two terabyte drives into it, which is something we're probably not going to do right now. Okay. So lining up the motherboard, sliding it in, and now I need the little screws in the screwdriver uh, over there. I think. Um, so this is the exciting part where I screw the machine into the case. So we're just about uh, done installing the motherboard. It, like Will said, it is just like building a regular PC. Uh, few simpler parts, you know, no video card, um, no sound card, obviously, no optical, um, no optical drive. And next, we're going to talk about the hard drives. So uh, as we mentioned earlier, we want the C drive, the primary hard drive, really fast. And what we got was a Seagate 7200.112, one terabyte hard drive as a primary. Mm -hmm. And it was like 84 bucks uh, online. It's the fastest one terabyte drive we've tested. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're using as a primary. And, and so we, you didn't, we didn't do a two terabyte, uh, like a Western Digital Black Drive. Simply because it was it was kind of too expensive, right? I mean, it's too expensive, and all it's really going to go on this uh, first drive is the OS and the applications, and a small That's, amount of yes. the data. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what you want to do then is invest heavily on expandability. So the secondary drive we picked a two terabyte Western Digital Caviar uh, green drive. It's low mm -hmm. RPM. I think only 5400 RPM. Well, it's variable. Seven, I variable yeah. between 50, but at, you know at its coolest, it's low, low yeah, power. Yeah, so it's, it's a relatively slow drive, but it's huge. Mm -hmm. And for the purposes, for the things that you use this kind of a machine for, you don't really need that much speed because you're only going to have one or two people connecting to this at a time at the most, at the most, most likely. So the Caviar Green was only about 136 bucks. 35 bucks. Yeah, which for bucks. two terabytes, amazing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I need the CPU cooler, if you please. 
Um, so the next thing I'm doing, I've got the motherboard plugged in. It's all connected. I'm getting the cooler ready to go. And stock cooler, just fine. Yeah, well, um, we, we use a retail CPU because it actually comes with the cooler. It's not an awesome cooler, but it more than gets the job done for this kind of machine. We just want something to kind of cool, keep the machine cool and is relatively quiet. Plug it in, plug it in. All right, that sounds like a marketing message from Glade. Okay, Easy. so that's in, snapped into place. I'm gonna plug the fan in on the motherboard. I'm gonna do the same thing for the back case fan here. And you can see even on the board, they're labeled CPU fan and sys fan. And again, we talked about all this stuff in length on our Build a PC video. So you should definitely check that out if you have more questions. So hard drives are next? Hard drives are next. Uh, I'm gonna do the Seagate drive first. I'm gonna put it in the top bay. It doesn't really matter where you put it. Um, the only thing I would say is it's probably a good idea since there's no fan in this front bay here that you can't see. Um, it's probably a good idea to space them out reasonably well so they don't get too hot. I mean, you really don't need to choose this case. We like this case. There are some really cheap mid-tower cases that have uh, front-loading hot swappable drives and uh, drive bays, mm -hmm. and those work just as well um, if you want to, you know, swap out drives. I mean, we just did this case because the price is right, and uh, I mean, it's it's a, actually a, quite a nice case for building an inexpensive machine. And small, it has all the, all, all the bays we need. Um, next, we'll talk about the, the power supply. Uh, we went with um, a 500 watt power supply that was only $50. Uh, the most important thing about the power supply, if you're gonna, if you plan on having a ton of uh, hard drives, is having enough power, a SATA power. So this one I think has about like four, uh, four or five uh, SATA ports or SATA power uh, leads. connectors yeah. leads. So uh, it's, this one's Antec, $50, 500 watts, more than enough power for this type of server. Well, and the thing, the thing to remember, yeah, I mean, you can do four or five drives on like a 250 watt power supply because mm -hmm. this is a low power CPU. It's not a ton of RAM. It's there's no components. There's no video card or anything like that. So. I mean, it is really a super, super light machine. And you can always use the Molex adapters for more saddle Exactly. One thing you might notice that we don't have an optical drive, so how do you actually get software on here? Well, how do you, Norm? USB. Uh, USB is actually how we're going to get the OS on this computer. Uh, you can actually download Windows Home Server, a trial edition. Uh, it's like 850 megs. So all you need is a one, like a, a one gigabyte uh, USB key. Um, we, ha we have a how-to on how to get that working on the USB key. And then once we're done building, plug that in, boot from USB, and install the home server. And that's really all you need to install, all the software you need to install, aside from drivers and stuff. So the last thing I'm doing, I'm plugging in the optical, the hard drives now, rather. Uh, and I've got a little tricky. I'm going to run the cables underneath so they're kind of out of the way and it's not quite so ugly in here. Um, it's a pretty simple machine so far. So, I mean, might as well do a little bit to make it look nice. Uh, and then the last thing to do before we're ready to boot it up and install Windows is put the PSU in. So as you can see, this PSU doesn't have a fan on the bottom. So you can put it in whichever way works best. I'm gonna put it in this way, I guess. It doesn't really matter. I'm making a lot of noise with the cables right now. Uh, this way we can see the label on the side, so that's pretty exciting. I'm hooked on something. Okay, uh, screws please. Okay, so, um, and of course, if you wanna build your own, you don't wanna do these exact components, that's fine. I mean, the nice thing about building your own computer is you can get exactly what you want and what you have budget for. Uh, so if you don't want to do, if you want to convert an old gaming machine, if you have, say, an old dual-core Athlon or something like that, it's perfect for a home server, and then all you need to do is buy a copy of Windows Home Server, and you're, you're really good to go. But we really do recommend uh, multi-core, especially if you plan on doing video conference coding. Right. Uh, it really helps. And from experience, you want to make sure you do a machine that has, uh, let's see, XP drivers for network and graphics and all that stuff, because a lot of times, Windows Server 2003 isn't particularly well supported by the other thing. If you can find, if, if what you're buying has Windows Server 2003 drivers, you're set. If it doesn't, then you should go on. Uh, so I'm going to plug in the power connectors and we'll be ready to boot it up. Hard drives are in, power supplies in, machines built. All that's left is to install Windows Home Server. Yep. And you know, load this thing up with content and, and see how to, how to go. So, where can people find out the rest of the server? We're not going to show how to build home, how to install home server here. Yes, uh, just scroll down. We'll have links to a full guide on installing Windows Home Server, how to configure it, uh, what plugins to install, what services to install to make it really all the awesome. cool stuff you can do to make yes. it even more awesome. But building it super easy, less than 15 minutes, it's going to be one of the easiest PC builds you've ever done, and it's going to be worthwhile. It's a great place to learn how to build a PC. So, uh, for tested, I'm Will Smith, and I'm Norm. Thanks for watching.
Norm, you were totally wrong. The Lake House is not a good movie. But it's so much better when we're watching it from our Windows home server. Good home server. Stream that movie. Stream.